the lifting coin on top of the bottle earlier in the program, that was caused by an increase in pressure. But that pressure was nothing compared to the sort of pressures that you get below a volcano. A volcano is probably one of the most spectacular sights that you can ever see in nature. Here's a painting of Mount Tarawira in New Zealand, which exploded as a volcano about 100 years ago. It must have been an incredible sight because huge amounts of rock and dust were thrown up into the air and that explosion continued for about four hours and then it kept simmering for a couple of days. Well, we could understand volcanoes a little better if we could see underneath the ground, but we can't, but we can look at diagrams. Have a look at this. If you could go down 50 or 100 kilometres below the Earth's surface, in many parts of the Earth, you'd find magma, molten rock, and above this, solid rock, the mantle, and then the Earth's crust. Now, if the magma finds a weakness in the Earth's mantle and crust, it may push upwards and emerge at the surface, causing a volcano to arise. And that's, of course, what happened at Tarawira. Well, another way of understanding volcanoes is to look at a model of a volcano. And when you go to Rotorua in New Zealand, you'll find boiling mud pools. You might say, are they volcanoes? No, they're certainly not, but they are serving for us here as little models of volcanoes because there's pressure beneath that mud pool. Look at that. And as the pressure comes to the surface, you get hot gases pushing up and throwing up lumps of mud and lumps of solid material and gases as well. So the whole thing, when viewed in slow motion, as it is being viewed now, is a model of a volcano. Now that's one model of a volcano, but here's another. Your science teacher may be able to do this for you at school using a chemical, bright orange chemical, called ammonium dichromate. Now, it's poisonous and it's dangerous, so it's not the sort of thing you'd do yourself. But your teacher might be able to do this for you, probably in a special part of the laboratory called a fume cupboard, which takes away any poisonous materials. Here's what you do. You make a little mound or a little heap of ammonium dichromate, and then you need to heat it up. Now, you can actually do it with a Bunsen burner or with a match. But it's interesting stuff because it starts reacting with itself. You can hear it fizzing and popping. You may actually see a few sparks. And when it starts to react, it produces more heat, so it continues to react. So you can take the match away after a while, and it starts behaving as if it were a tiny volcano. Look at that. Material is being produced within the cone and thrown up, just as in the model, just as in a real volcano. And so the cone grows as that green material, dark green material, falls down the outside. Watch and listen. You can actually see flame emerging from the top of the volcano, just as you would with a real volcano. And as that material drifts down the side, the volcano becomes larger. There are actually two openings to the cone in our little model volcano here. Now they've merged together. The whole thing is becoming larger and larger. It's now about four times the original size and still going. material falling down the outside of the cone, making it grow higher and wider. And it'll keep doing this until all of the ammonium dichromate has been used up. spent and you can see that it's formed the shape of a typical volcanic cone it's dying down it's now almost stopped well that was a model volcano 
Later in the program, we'll take you to the top of a real one.